Welcome to worship here at Bethel St. Andrews United Church. I'm Christine Johnson, and I serve this congregation, and this is Rick Levin. And we're so happy to be here this morning. And we also have Dave and Nancy Haley with us to uh, help us do the liturgy. Now, the order of service is available on the website, and also uh, it gets sent out through an email to all of our congregants. Uh, and so if you would like, you could follow along on the order of worship, and you could sing the hymns together as well. So I hope that uh, you enjoy this service and that this uh, worship time is a blessing to you. I will sing the praises of my God. We will bless God's name forever and ever. Every day we will bless God. And praise the name of God forever and ever. God is great, and our praise must be great too. God's greatness is hard for us to understand fully. Our ancestors told our elders, and our elders told us. We will tell the coming generations about the mighty works of the Lord. God's abundant and overwhelming goodness is famous. We will share it with all people. Let us sing our praises out loud. The prayer of approach, let us pray. Gracious God, we gather our heads together as we pray your name out loud. And we, as we look at the glory of the earth, we see your glory. As we connect in love with our family, we know your love. Even though our church building is closed, we continue to be the church of <coughs> Jesus Christ. Help us share his gospel in everyday ways through the worship and community connection. When we are discouraged, give us courage to keep going and be patient with ourselves and others. Remind us of our blessings and keep us grateful for all your gifts you continue to pour on us. Be with us in the time of worship as we seek to bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn today is from Voices United, 357, <coughs> Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Tell me the stories of Jesus, I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Let me hear how the children stood round his knee, and I shall fancy his blessing resting on me. Words full of kindness, deeds full of grace, all sense of wonder how rolled the sea tossing the boat in a tempest on Galilee and how the master ready and kind chided the billows and hushed the to the city I follow the children's band waving a 
branch of the palm tree high in my hand. One of his heralds, yes, I would sing. Loud is Hosanna, Jesus is King. Show me the scene in the garden. cross where my Savior for me was slain. Sad ones or bright ones, so they may be. Stories of Jesus tell them to me. The scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go to the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, and have borne the burden of the day, who have borne the burden of the day, and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I not doing you no wrong? I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This parable of Jesus lays two concepts side by side. The story of the landowner pits the philosophy of generosity against envy and jealousy. From the worker's perspective, there's no equity. Every worker, regardless of how much they work, gets the same day's pay. In our capitalistic economic system, this story of Jesus reeks of socialism, or even worse, communism. We get tied in knots over the injustice of one worker making the same as another worker who didn't do the same amount of hard labor. It just doesn't seem right. So where does this feeling come from? We don't like inequality when it means we're the one who loses out what we perceive to be something that we deserve. 
For example, the big lesson I learned from having twins is that they have an acute sense of fairness. For years, I had to be very careful about making sure Peter and Scott were both treated as fairly as I could. If one needed a new shirt, they both got new shirts. If one wanted to take music lessons, both took music lessons. If one had too many peas on their plate, the other one had to have the exact same number of peas. I don't know the number of times I heard one of them say, it's not fair. So, in essence, I guess that my boys were really wrestling with a sense of entitlement. If one of them receives something, the other figures they were entitled to the same. Entitlement can get us into a lot of trouble when we're never really standing on an equal playing field. And just using this uh, as another example, using my twins as another example, now, now my one son has completed a master's degree, and while I'm thankful that he has a job, he earns a little bit over minimum wage. And meanwhile, his brother has completed a law degree, he's been called to the bar, and he has a much higher salary. Do they resent each other now that there are differing circumstances? Well, I'm happy to report that the answer to that question is no. So we all accept that we are paid differently for different jobs, even when we're highly educated and skilled at our jobs. And we would never consider that to be strange. But we do think it's strange that workers in a field would be paid the same no matter how long they worked. So perhaps we're asking the wrong question. We ask, is it fair? Is it equitable? But God is more concerned with the question, is it just? Justice for God is seeking the well-being of all creatures on earth. So God's just, justice is about making sure that all creatures have what they need in order to flourish. And this can happen in many different ways. So a landowner decides to be generous and people are angry because of his generosity. In response, he asks the workers, are you envious because I am generous? Hmm, good question. Now this phrase is the English translation of the original Greek. But what the actual Greek reads is, is your eye evil because I am good? In a world of inequity, why does generosity seem so suspect? We don't like it when people get more of what we perceive to be their fair share. Now, when I was young, our dinner table usually included 11 people. And we had eagle eyes for a brother or sister who got more food than we did. And yet, how come some people make ridiculous amounts of money while others are hungry because they can't afford food? Then, on top of all of that, we start doing this strange thing. We blame the poor for their own poverty. Do we blame people for being rich? 
you have to admit that there's something wrong with both of these scenarios. You see, this story tells us that if God is the landowner, God is generous to a fault. God is concerned with justice, with making sure that all the workers have what they need. If the landowner paid per hour, the latecomers would not be able to survive another day. They would be hungry, cold, and frightened. And the landowner has the well-being of the entire workforce at heart, not just the early birds. As Christians, we are called to a different standard. Jesus calls us to a different standard. Jesus is forcing us to recognize our propensity for envy, jealousy, greed, and stinginess. In a capitalist economic system, there is so much inequity built into the system that it seems hypocritical for us to judge God's generosity. And if God is generous to a fault, squandering riches on people who we think don't deserve it, perhaps it should cause us to pause and reflect on why we don't want a more equitable world. When I look around, I see friends with much nicer houses driving much nicer cars than me. Should I be envious? Should I be jealous? And I live in a much nicer house and drive a much nicer car than many in my community. Should they be envious? Should they be jealous? The burning question for me is how do we live with systemic inequality while still being grateful for the abundance that we do have? I mean, just look around us. We're in such a beautiful area of the country and have so many things to be thankful for. But the question that's asked in the Greek is a very interesting one. Is your eye evil because I am good? What is justice? When we find ourselves casting that evil eye on others because they are generous to a fault, we're in trouble. I believe this is what Jesus is trying to get at. God's generosity doesn't take anything away from hardworking people. God is not insulting hardworking early birds. God is simply adding as much good to the world as is possible so that all can benefit. And we, in the first instance, are the beneficiaries of that generosity. We came into this world naked, and we will leave it naked. Earthly wealth didn't come with us, nor can we take it with us. Human dignity is God's currency. And if human dignity means paying everyone the same, then human dignity overrides fairness. This parable of Jesus lays two concepts side by side. The story of the landowner pits the philosophy of generosity against envy and jealousy. And since God's ways are not our ways, we do have trouble understanding this story. We have no trouble, however, of accepting generosity when it comes our way. I say, let's err on the side of generosity 
for the sake of the whole world. Amen. I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you at home would know this particular tune. It's called Mansion Over the Hilltop. And I invite you to sing along with me and the folks that are here today providing the service to you. And uh, feel blessed. I'm satisfied the cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransom will shine I want a gold one that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets at our purest gold though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet my pillows of stone and though i find here no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mansion my own. Oh Lord, a mansion just over the hilltop. And not a friend where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder We'll never more wander, but walk the streets at our purest gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets at our purest goal but walk the streets that our purest goal Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, it's your generosity that we see around us every day. The beauty of the world, the friendships of our neighbors, our family relationships. And especially in September, we celebrate the bounty of the harvest. And we thank you for feeding us and giving us water 
and giving us air to breathe. Oh God, every day help us to me to be grateful and to see the abundance around us. Oh God, we say a special prayer for all of those who are suffering from COVID-19. We know that the cases have risen recently and we are all worried about it. We pray that as a community, we can make sure that it doesn't spread too far and wide. Oh God, in those who are suffering from the effects of the virus, we say a special prayer. We pray for those who take care of them. And for the more serious cases, we pray for doctors and nurses and all of the hospital staff. And oh God, we continue to pray for our children, for our youth, for our young adults in university. We pray that this special time of their life may be fruitful and they will overcome the fear that comes from dealing with the pandemic. Help us be a community that cares and loves each other, even despite the troubles that we are in. And oh God, we pray for those who have lost their jobs or who are suffering some kind of financial difficulties. We know that things have not been easy and we pray that together we might make a difference. Oh God, we pray for our community. In particular, we pray for Mary Simpson, who is continuing to heal from an operation. And we pray for Donna Jorgensen, who is receiving medical treatments. We pray for their health and their wellness. We pray that you will surround them with your comforting arms and give them peace. We pray for those who have lost a loved one. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who feel isolated. We pray for our elders who are in long-term care facilities or seniors' homes. And oh God, we pray for our church. We pray for a church that perhaps might not be physically open, but has open hearts to everyone around us. And we pray that in whatever way feels like the Spirit's leading, that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ and everything that we do and say, all of our work and all of our play. Oh God, we bring all of these concerns before you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's join together in our hymn. It's from Voices United 232, and it's Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, life and love. Hearts unfold like clouds before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of 
sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All your works with joy surround you, earth and heaven reflect your rays. Stars and angels sing around you, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, sound their praise eternally. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Source of grace and fount of blessing, let your light upon us shine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Thank you to God for being generous, for giving us this world, for giving us everything that we have. And we thank God for those gifts, and we pray that we use them wisely. And, oh God, help us to avoid being envious and jealous, but to be happy and to know that God's will is just for all. And now may the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever.